Hello everybody, my name is Ashley. Welcome to episode one of the Paper Crane Yarns video podcast. I'm coming to you from my dye studio here in a small town in Alabama, USA. I am the dyer behind Paper Crane Yarns, uh, as well as the project bag maker and knitter and soon to be local yarn store owner um, here in this very building. So I'm excited to be filming my first podcast, or should I say second, because I just finished recording uh, my, my first episode um, not too long ago, but I really wasn't pleased with the way that the lighting turned out and some of the segments. Um, I'm a little camera shy, so this is kind of hard for me, and it really showed. So hopefully this one will turn out a little better, but we'll see. I'm sure I'll forget to mention things, but I'm sure I forgot some in the first one too. So I suppose I can jump right into everything I've been working on um, fiber related. So with this being my first episode, I don't really have any updates to show you unless you follow my Instagram account uh, where you probably have seen a few of these projects here and there. I don't post a whole lot about what I'm working on. Um, I, I mostly focus on what I'm dyeing and what I'm sewing, but I'm happy to share the progress that I make um, on my knits and whatnot because I love to see what other people are working on and um, I always feel so inspired by seeing what people are creating. So I thought I would take this time to kind of share um, the same sort of hopefully inspiration for you guys in this space. So uh, referring to my notes here, I guess I'll start with what I am working on. So the project that I am going to start with is my Weekender Light by Andrea Mowry. This is my second time knitting a Weekender, but it's my first time doing it in fingering weight. The first one I knit is like a bright pink uh, worsted weight version. Um, I knit it out of Wool of the Andes uh, worsted in again like a really bright pink. Um, I've, I've worn it a few times but I knew it was a little bit out of my comfort zone when I made it so I'm kind of redoing it in a a fingering weight, which is a, a weight that I prefer for sweaters, and in a color that I can wear all the time. So, this is the version I'm working on now. And I guess the downside to me re-recording this podcast is before I was set up in a way where you could really see a, a wider uh, view, and now I'm a little bit closer up. But again, the lighting was just kind of crazy because I have this big bright sun uh, coming in behind me with these giant windows and nothing to cover them with so we'll figure it out in time right <laughs> but I, I will stand up and kind of show you where I'm at I am all done except for one sleeve which I uh, just finished winding the yarn for so this is the um, Highland Superwash Sock Twist in Charcoal Heather. These are 50 gram, uh, 50 gram skeins. They're 80% superwash, fine Highland wool, and 20% polyamide. And again, it's a fingering weight in a, a gray color. Um, and they feel really nice, very squishy. They smell pretty good. I love sheepy smells. Um, so I, yeah, these Hanks, I think we're on closeout with um, webs. So I got them pretty inexpensively, which is obviously a nice thing, uh, a nice perk for the sweater. But here we go. So this is where I'm at. Of course, it has the beautiful exposed seam detailing on the shoulder that this pattern is, is really kind of known for. Um, so that's lots of fun. So I have one full sleeve. And I just need to knit the second one, and then I will call this one a day. So I'm knitting, I believe, the small size. The first one I knit in the worsted weight was the extra small, and I didn't uh, like the fit so much up here with the neck. Um, I think it's just me, but even with this one in the slightly larger size, 
Um, I'm probably just binding off too tightly, but it's a little bit um, of a small circumference. So it's kind of hard to get over my head. I have to really make it work. But once it's on, it's beautiful. And I do love the fit through here. Um, I love the fingering weight version because it's so drapey and um, this yarn in particular has like a nice stretch to it, especially in the ribbing. Like the ribbing, it's so stretchy, but you can tell it's very structured because it's got that polyamide addition. So I'm really excited to wear this. Um, it's light enough that I could get away with this on a chilly night, even here in Alabama. Um, and, you know, with some layers, I think it would hold up pretty well in, in pretty cold weather, too. Um, of course, I have the this faux seam going down the front, which, again, it's another classic detail with this pattern. Um, and through the back, I do have a strand to weave in. But, yeah, I'm very excited to wear this one. I know that this one's going to get a lot more use than my adventurous pink version. Um, I can't remember how many skeins I started with, but it was probably seven or eight that I purchased, maybe nine. And right now I have three full skeins left, um, plus a few scraps here and there of some other balls. The first sleeve I did only took um, right, almost right at one full 50 gram hank, so I think I'm only going to need this to finish this sweater. But I do have two more hanks, and if not, I can use these for um, a pair of socks or some accents in um, other socks. So, uh, inspired as I was by other yarn podcasters, and I'm sure that you all know what I'm talking about, I invested in a little box to keep my socks in. This one is covered in lots of little birds. If I could be anything, I would be an ornithologist. I just love birds. Um, I don't want this to be a bird podcast, but it could be. I would be happy with that. So my next work of progress kind of starts with an old finished object. The first ever hand-dyed yarn that I bought, I got it from House of Yarn in uh, Nashville. Tennessee, and I got it from a local to them dyer, Old Rusted Chair. So this is their pool party colorway. It's just a, a fun blue with all these different speckles. Um, and this is knit in Bullenbein's favorite sock pattern. That is an excellent go-to pattern for me. That is my vanilla sock pattern, really. Um, it's so well put together, and Kristen went through so much effort to make beautifully instructed videos, so I highly recommend checking that out if you haven't, um, especially if you're more of a beginner sock knitter, it will really teach you from start to finish what you need to know to get through a pair of socks. And uh, again, it's my go-to, so I use it for all of my socks, including these. So again, these are an older object, um, desperately needing to be washed. But um, with all of my socks, I have leftover yarn because I, I tend to not, I, I have a size seven foot, so I don't need a whole lot here and my legs are um, usually a little bit shorter but I do I prefer to knit them longer so you can bunch them but all that to say I had about 29 or 20 yeah I think 29 grams left from that skein after knitting those socks so I've got this remaining this little ball here and from it I am knitting these teeny tiny baby socks. So this is the the Perfect Newborn Socks by Tabitha Gandhi. So um, I believe the pattern offers two versions for the sock, a cabled version and a ribbed version. I'm doing the ribbed version. Um, I love the stretch in it and uh, I wish I could input some clips from the some clips from the video I already recorded, but I'm not that advanced yet. Um, I was kind of going on a weird tangent about how I don't know how small baby feet are, but I imagine they must be pretty small because this is what the pattern had me knit up. Um, very cute, and there is some stretch if if needed, I suppose. Um, they are newborn socks, so you know I don't know any newborns, but. 
hopefully this would fit it. So, um, yeah, enough rambling about baby feet again. Why do I keep doing this? Okay, I had a brief little interruption there and I don't know the, if the camera is quite the same, but um, here I am. So anyway, as I was saying, these are the Perfect Newborn Socks by Tabitha Gandhi, and this is the ribbed version. So it's really cute and tiny, and it's knit out of um, the leftover wool that I had from my socks. So this started as a gift knit for a friend who's supposed to be having a baby, but we'll see. I might keep them for me for, for the future because I think it'd be adorable to have a matching pair of, of socks for me and the, you know, baby that isn't here, doesn't exist. All right, moving on. Oh, I should mention, so this, I weighed this right before filming and um, this is about seven grams. So I should have about 22 left um, so I can easily obviously make another and then I'll still have some left over. So that's where I'm at with that. Eventually I'll get the camera right. Okay. So my next, um, work in progress. So it's a half finished object. This is made out of um, some of my hand dyed yarn. This isn't a colorway that I offer, but it's something that I could offer if, you know, in the future, perhaps. Um, I was mostly trying out a dyeing technique when I made this, so it's not necessarily my color palette, but I do like the sock and I'm sure I'll find some use for it, whether it's gifting or wearing it around the house or um, roller skating, <laughs> it, I'll figure it out. But it's a little bit um, vintage looking. So it makes me think of like the 80s or Sesame Street or um, I don't know exactly, <laughs> but it's a uh, definitely high contrast. It's a lot of fun. Um, again, really not my color palette by any means, but it's a, certainly a fun colorway and it's pretty cool how the the cuff kind of self-striped and then I got a little bit of self-striping, but it's really just this micro striping in here that I think is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in love with like the high contrast in all of the rows, so I, that's pretty cool. And then this base is a 75-25 merino nylon fingering. Um, I still have plenty left, so that leads me to my work in progress, which is being held in a little um, project bag that I sewed. This is this was a sample bag, so it's not very polished and it doesn't have my label, but um, this is something I just kind of whipped up for myself. It's blue and pink and it has these tiny cranes um, a little dirty right now because this pretty much goes everywhere with me uh, but here we go so this is what the skein looks like again it's pretty wild at least for me but it is so much fun and it's it's one of those knits where every every stitch is a surprise you don't quite know which color is gonna come through and it's just so much fun to see it work up so I've cast it on my second one and it's a little bit tangled up here but again it's the favorite socks pattern by Bullenbein and I really just have the start of the cuff here although I was thinking about it when I was recording this before and I cannot remember how many stitches I cast on for the first sock and I don't know if I did the same for this one so I may end up having to rip this out but um, we'll see I guess so that's all the progress I've made on that one And now my next work in progress. Um, and I should mention, I knit my socks on a nine inch circular. I tend to use the Chowgu Red Lace. I really prefer knitting on nine inch circular. Um, I have used DPNs, but I tend to have the issue with laddering and I just really, really prefer the nine inch. I know some people find them uncomfortable, but I think that they are the smoothest way for me to knit socks. And um, that, that said, I have not tried knitting socks on Magic Loop, but I, I really try to avoid Magic Loop if I can. Um, I am knitting the sleeves of my Weekender on Magic Loop, but I definitely prefer 9-inch circulars when I can use them. So that is what I'm using for that. 
So this next one, again, this is living in one of the project bags that I made. And this is one that I am, that I do have available in my Etsy shop. Um, a slightly different version. So I'll show you the one that's mine and then the one that I have for sale. So this is one of my Alice in Wonderland bags, and this is a very large project bag. So this can hold a sweater quantity, it can hold a baby blanket or the start to, you know, a fuller size blanket. This is a very roomy bag. I mean, I have multiple skeins, I have a, a sweater I'm working on, and there's still plenty of space. So you can fold the sides over so that it uh, kind of rests and it's, it becomes more like, kind of like a basket. Um, it's very sturdy and you can clasp the sides together just to give it a little bit more support if you want it to, to sit still while you're knitting from it. And then the one that I have available in my store, this one's a little bit more polished and I like the details on this one better. It has a red lining, so it's a lot more vibrant and fun and the inner pocket is my contrast fabric, so it's that green that is the base of the bag. Um, and if you go to my Etsy shop, you'll find videos and more images of this one that are a little bit more clear, but I just love Alice in Wonderland so much. I find myself to be very inspired by the world and the lore and just everything that that story contains. So I always try to incorporate Alice in Wonderland in some way. Um, so this is my Alice bag, but Back to my work in progress. So this one is, is kind of a fun one for me. This is a redo of the first sweater I ever knit, which is the Novice Sweater by Petite Knit. And I am knitting it in Drops Air. This is a 65% alpaca, 28% polyamide, and 7% wool blend. Um, I'm not quite sure what the weight is supposed to be because it's been a long time since I purchased this. I mean, this was like the first yarn I ever purchased that wasn't acrylic from Joanne or what have you. Um, so it's been a long time. So I can't quite remember what they're considering this, but I would say that this is like a woolen spun. It's definitely a thicker weight, but um, it's very fluffy. So you can squish it a good bit. Um, so again, I'm not quite sure what they're considering it, but I think it's better for thicker weight projects. So that is what I'm using. And the colorway is, I can't quite remember what the color is called, um, but it's, it's like almost like a white gray. It's a very light gray. It's got a blend of fibers. So there's a, some darker gray bits kind of spun in there too, um, but it's just beautiful. But again, it's just something that I've had in my stash because it was my first sweater knit. So in my last episode where I was trying to record, I really went into great detail about what was wrong with this first sweater that I knit. It might look fine from there, but it is the complete opposite. It is so bad, it's so bad. So basically, when I knit this, this was maybe the second thing I'd ever knit. And it's very floofy, and the floof gets everywhere. But uh, yeah, so I think this might have been my second knit ever, um, behind a, a hat, maybe. And I was self-taught, so I did not realize that I was knitting completely improperly. Um, I was knitting holding the yarn incorrectly. I was pulling it through from the top rather than from underneath, if that makes sense. So you might know it as reverse mounted stitches. That's what I did. This whole sweater, except for a small portion, every stitch is reverse mounted, which is why it looks so wonky if you can see that. So I, I will hold it up next to the one I'm currently working on because hopefully that will kind of show you the difference. So this is the old one. So if you look at the stitches, it's like sitting cross-legged. So every stitch goes over itself basically. And that's, that's as well as I can describe it. Um, now compared to 
this one that I'm knitting now correctly so these ones are going like this like they should instead of this if that makes sense not let my stitches slip off the needles here so this one is looking much much better and these are my increases that give that that classic look to the pattern if you've seen the pattern before so yeah this is coming out much much better I have just completed the last increase for the yoke so that's about where I'm at so I've pretty much got it to here um, I'm just knitting to the recommended length and then I'm going to separate for the sleeves but it's looking pretty good now back to the old one this will be frogged today um, if there's time so if you watch Moonstone Makes Dynamite Trujillo um, Tommy's podcast She's hosting a fix it, finish it, or frog it, Cal. Yes, something, so what, it's those three terms in some order, and I think that's close. Maybe it's fin, fix, frog, but if you haven't seen her podcast, you should definitely check it out. Um, and if you have, then you know that she's hosting, a, it's a kind of like a knit along or an anti knit along through the rest of the month, I think, of April. And uh, the idea is that you take old whips or old projects that um, maybe didn't turn out how you thought they would, and you can frog the yarn, reuse the yarn, um, or you can finish something that's been sitting around. Um, you get the idea. So this is coming out because I want this yarn back and uh, I'm never gonna wear this. So more details about how ridiculous this sweater is. Um, I did knit the folded over neckline like the pattern recommends and I did not do that for the one I'm, I'm knitting here because I, I really am very sensitive about how tight things are around my neck and this one was very tight and I think that was really just me and my lack of understanding of how to pull it off like you can see it's unfolded because I couldn't I didn't do it properly and um, it's too tight anyway so going over my head it has I'm sure that the thread popped at some point but um so yeah this one I modified so it's just a more standard neckline and I know people preferred but some people like to do that folded over neckline because it has kind of that um, more polished edge but I really like the look of just the um, cast on edge and I just do a standard cast on usually a uh, long tail cast on so this one I already kind of started opening up the cuff so it's gonna look a little extra crazy than it, uh, crazier than it did. But you can see with this one, it's full of holes. I mean, what is that? And it's like that on both sides, on both sleeve. It's really, really bad. Um, let's see, I've got this really bad laddering where my stitch marker must have been. Um, it's been so long since I knit this, but it's just rough. And one sleeve is longer than the other. Um, and I was explaining when I tried to record this before, I realized my mistake with knitting right at the end. So right when I was on my second sleeve, I was halfway through it. I realized what I had been doing. So I was able to fix it, which was good practice, but, um, it's, it's crazy that you can see where I learned of my mistake um, and hopefully it'll come up but there's a pretty clear line I'll try to get it to show up so right here these are all reverse mounted stitches and then these are regular knit stitches so there's a pretty big difference and um yeah, I was pretty disappointed when I realized what I had done, but uh, on the other hand, I'm glad that I learned early and I could see that I didn't like it. So that was a good learning experience, but it also made me feel better because the whole time I was knitting it, I thought this looks terrible. I'm a really bad knitter and it's just because I wasn't doing it right. So there's that. I'm going to try it on. And again, I already started opening up the sleeves, so it's going to look a little bit crazy, but I want you to see how different the lengths are of the arms.
this is a full sleeve and uh, this is where the sleeve had ended. It's also a giant balloon. It will not not do this. So this is really bad. <laughs> But again, I'm glad that I was able to learn from this one and I learned early on and uh, I didn't get rid of it. I saved it. I knew eventually I would be able to find a way to reuse the yarn. So I'm excited to be revisiting this project and uh, doing it again. So that's enough about this uh, terrible mistake of a sweater. I'll make sure to Keep you guys posted with my new one because I'm sure that I'll love it when I, the, the pattern I'm sure that I will just adore when I have it um, made properly so my next uh, work in progress my last one my most exciting one is a mystery knit along that lyrical knits um, I believe her name is Mary Anarea or Anarella however you say it this is a just amazing, hysterical, perfect mystery knit along that she created and um, I'm participating in as it's coming out each week. And again, I'm just so in love with it because it's combining two of my most favorite things, which is Monty Python and knitting. Now that said, this is an ongoing mystery knit along. So if you do not want the, the clues ruined for you, if you don't want to know what it looks like, if you're working on it or you're planning to, then skip forward or turn off the podcast or something because I, I don't want to ruin this for you. So you have your fair warning here. Do not look at this if you don't want to see it. <laughs> the other thing I will mention is that while this is yarn that I personally dyed, um, I accept no creative like praise for the design or, or anything like that. This is uh, based on the kits that Miss Babs Yarn Company created for this mystery knit along. Um, I wasn't able to purchase them, so I did dye them myself. And uh, I just am so in love with all the work that they put in, these beautiful kits that they created. Um, I'm really happy that I was able to do something similar but again, I, I want to give all creative props to them because this this was there, this was the work that they did. So I'm just really grateful that I was able to do something similar since I couldn't buy the kits. Um, but that said, I have dyed two kits um, to make this shawl twice. Um, and I just, I love the way that it's coming out. I'm knitting one right now and I will start the second probably as soon as this one's done, if not sooner. Um, I might put this one down when I finish the clue and cast on my second one. But, okay, again, don't look if you don't want to see it. <laughs> so this is what it's looking like. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's highly textured. The gradient is beautiful. This is based off of the Burn Her colorway kit that Miss Babs created. And I just love the way that this is coming up. I have started on Clue 2, which was released yesterday. And so this section here, this is Clue 2 and everything else is Clue 1. Again, I am just in love with this. Words can't really do it justice. You can see it's got beautiful lace and lots of interesting stitch patterns. So I have learned multiple new stitches to me just by doing this. Um, the pattern is so instructional and um, very, very helpful. I, I'm pretty amazed by how well everything is described and how, I mean, I've been able to learn everything I didn't know just from reading the descriptions uh, in the glossary of stitches. So she, she really did a fantastic job putting this together and it's hysterical. It's all based off of the movie. So if you've seen it, it's just hilarious. And um, this 
pays such great homage to the whole film and everything that they did. Um, I just love it. So I'm, I'm very excited to be knitting this and I can't stop looking at it and I can't put it down. My husband's probably tired of hearing about it, but I mean, how can I not just be fawning over this? So I am knitting this on a 75-25 merino nylon fingering base. I believe that the kits that Miss Babs yarn uh, created was made from uh, two ply. So that would be something like this. This is a two ply fingering versus um, this is a four ply merino nylon base. I would have preferred to have knit it on this base, but I didn't have any at the time that I could dye. So I just went with what I had, but it is coming out so great and the texture is incredible. So that will take me to my dream knitting and what I'm planning for the future. So like I said, I'm going to knit this twice. I, I uh, dyed my second kit based off of the Killer Rabbit uh, colorway that Miss Babs created. And this one is much more my color palette. I mean, I love the way the that one's turning out and I love black in general. Not so much reds and yellows and oranges for me. I tend to prefer, um, you know, purples and mauves and pinks. So these are much more my style. But I am very happy with the way it's coming out. So anyway, the second kit, the primary color for this one is going to be uh, white, whereas it was black for the last one. And I just realized I forgot to show you the gradient this time around. And I guess this is what happens when you record twice in a row. You forget things. So I'm going to back up really quick and show you the gradient that I'm using. So my base is just a basic black yarn and going from lightest to darkest, I dyed this faint yellow peachy orange kind of shade. And these are all tonals, so they're not speckled, but there is a little bit of variegation just in the sense that some of the undyed yarn is coming through. Um, I didn't dye these very opaque, I, I suppose. Um, I wanted a little bit of that illustrated look. To me, when you use a tonal and there's still a bit of that white base in there, the, the ending fabric, it just looks like it was illustrated, like a comic book or something, and I love it. It's like cell shaded. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going for. So this is my lightest shade. And then it moves to uh, this very bright yellow. Followed by this pretty true orange. And then it moves along to this peachy salmon color. So this one's really fun and vibrant and I could see wanting a whole sweater out of this but then never wearing it. So probably won't do that, but it is very cute. And then um, a darker peachy kind of red. So it's not quite red and it's not quite orange. I would definitely consider this to be like a, I guess a coral. And then finally is this really true red. It's showing up a little pink on the camera, I think, but it is, it's a very true bright red. So that is everything for my first version. And then just to show you quickly the yarn that I dyed for the next one, again, based off of the kit by Miss Babs. So this one will have a, a primarily white base. This will be the main color. And this is just totally undyed yarn. Um, of, of my yarn, followed by, now all these colorways were just sort of, I dyed them to match what I was going for. They're not necessarily colorways that I have created for the shop, but I will probably do a few of these 
Like this one, for example, I don't know how well it'll come off in this lighting, but it's just a beautiful um, peachy pink white. So just to hold it up next to the pure white, there's a difference. A little hard to tell here on this camera, but it's just this beautiful kind of tan peach with the very occasional like strawberry speckle. I don't know, They're, it's very cute. And then the next color is a slightly darker version of that shade. They're basically the same color, but this one, uh, again, is just a little darker. show them side by side. You can certainly see that this one's darker and there's kind of like the strawberry speckle I was talking about. And then I have a true silver gray. I'm so sorry about the lighting. I swear the first one was so bright that it was all you could focus on was just how bright everything was and now it's a little too dark. So I'm gonna have to play around with that but yeah, this one's really just like a silver, it's kind of shiny, so I like it. The next color is like a mauve lilac shade. Um, hmm. I suppose it's kind of coming up. And then the next color is more of an actual purple, purple gray, so you can probably see a little bit better side by side here. This one is a little bit more purple than it's showing up, but Hopefully in my, in my next video, you'll get to see these shades a bit better. And then the cool thing about this colorway um, is this bright red shade that I'm using for the first one. This is actually in that one as well. So this will be like a beautiful pop of color compared to all those really muted shades. And again, it's called the Killer Rabbit um, colorway that, that Miss Babs created. And if you've seen the movie, you definitely know why. So I'm really excited. I think that this one is going to be so gorgeous um, and I'll probably wear it all the time. And both of these will be on display on my wall in my home anytime I'm not wearing them because they really are like works of art. Okay, my only other um, plans for knitting anytime soon. I am going to be making a sheer V sweater by Jessie Mae Designs, and I'm sure that you've seen it because it is beautiful. I feel like on Ravelry it didn't have quite as many projects as I thought that it would, so it must be a newer design. I'm not quite sure when it came out, but it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern, and I will link this pattern as well as everything else I've talked about in the description below. But I highly recommend going and looking at everybody's projects. It's, it's beautiful if you haven't seen it. It has sort of like a a little bit of a bell sleeve and it's got this sheer V panel right here and that's of course its namesake um, and it's knit with a light fingering paired with um, a silk mohair. So what I went with was the Anzilla Cloud light fingering and this is the En Naturel. So this I believe is just a totally undyed base and it is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. 575 yards or 525 meters. So it's just beautiful. And I'm going to pair it with the Pearl Soho Tussock or Tussock. Can somebody let me know how to say that? But this is the Pink Fog color and it is 60% super fine kid mohair and 40% silk. So this will be my first time knitting with mohair and I really can't wait. It's just beautiful. Um, and I think these will look so elegant together this, I really chose these colors based on, I guess, the project page. Um, the, Jessie made the pictures for the pattern, I think, are essentially these colors, something very similar. And I just love the way that it turned out because the sheer bead panel, it's almost a nude. Um, so it, it has, of course, that beautiful halo that everybody talks about with mohair, but it, it's, it's so elegant looking. And I think that you could really dress it up or play around with it. So I'm, I'm really excited to make that. Originally, I was going to do like a black on black combo because I think those are incredible too. So I, I'll probably do that in the future, but I have a lot of black in my wardrobe and I thought I should maybe start with um, or at least knit this pattern in something a little bit different just so I could have more of a variety. So, yep, I'm very excited to use these. 
and I hope I got enough. I only got two skeins of the light fingering, um, the Anzula Cloud, and three skeins of the mohair. It's not a very long sweater. I think it's a bit more cropped, so I think that should be about right. I tend to over-purchase yarn, so I always buy more than I need. Um, not necessarily on purpose, I just end up with so much left over after I knit what I need, so hopefully that'll be the case. Um, at the very least, I hope I have enough. Alrighty. So I will sort of wrap it up here with my finished objects. Now, because I haven't made a podcast before, I don't, again, I don't have progress to update you on, but I do have a couple things I've at least finished recently. So I have a pair of socks here. And again, these are the favorite socks pattern by Bull and Vine, Kristen Lair. This is really my go-to pattern. Um, and then this is in the Croy brand Cameo Colors colorway, I believe is what it's called. I purchased this so long ago. I think I paid $2 a ball for these. So, I mean, how could you not? I don't even think I looked at what it was. I just got it, honestly. Um, but yeah, so they're very sturdy. Um, I think that they are a little bit too big. I must have knit the medium. I tend to prefer the small, but I kind of like when you put it on and it scrun you can scrunch it down. So you've got kind of like this effect. I think that's really fun. Um, it wouldn't be me if there wasn't a mistake though. So two by two rib, one by one rib. Why do I do these things to myself? Uh, anyway, they're cute. I'll definitely wear them a ton. And this is much more my color palette, these blues and pinks and this little pop of like a light gray. So I'm, I'm very excited about these. And now I can add them to my bird box. My other recent finish is uh, the second time I've knit this sweater. I, I guess I tend to knit things twice a lot. I just, when I love a pattern, I want more of it. Um, what can I say? So this is knit out of um, Istex Let Lobi. And I'm sure that you have seen this and you'll know exactly what I'm knitting when you see it. A Felix pullover. So this is, um, I cannot remember the exact name of the colorway. And this ball band does not say, just says 1420 as the colorway. I know it had a name, but it's basically a brown and gray mixed together. So this is my Felix, and I'm going to put it on so you can see. I will say I knit the small this time. The first time I knit it, I knit a charcoal gray color or light gray. And it, I knit the smallest size, which I really do prefer over this one that I knit. But in both cases, I wish that I would have knit them shorter because I have kind of a shorter torso. So I don't get quite the effect I was looking for with the sweater when it's on. Um, this one really comes down to like my hips, I suppose. And I would like it to be a little bit more higher up on the waist um, because I like to put it over dresses or you know high-waisted pants. But I am happy with how it came out. Um, so I will show you. This would look a little better over something better suited for this pattern, but you should get the idea. So this is where it hits. Again, it's a little long. I would prefer if it was more up here. And I, I'm not, I like the, the ease, the positive ease. I'm fine with the fact that it's oversized. That's what I wanted. But again, I just wish it was a little bit higher, maybe. But it is absolutely beautiful and so warm. And of course, the, the best part are these little eyelets, this little bit of lace um, here. It's just so beautiful and it's very iconic. Like I would, I would recognize this if I saw somebody wearing one, I would say, yep, that's Felix. Um, so yeah, this is a pattern by Amy Christoffers. And again, I'm sure you've seen it, but you can find it on Ravelry. And I highly, highly recommend knitting this. This took me um, six days, I think. So it's a very instant gratification kind of knit. So if you want something and you want it now, I would say knit this. And, and the Let Lopi is really pretty inexpensive too. So 
this is a, a more economical knit and um, it's so warm. This this is great outerwear. So like right now <laughs> I'm really burning up. That that's how warm it is. Um, it's I believe woolen spun. It's just beautiful. You get lots of little stray hairs. You can kind of see it in the light. Um, I love, of course, the ribbing. I always knit my sleeves a little bit longer because I, I like to be able to, of course, do this. My hands get very cold. So yeah, no complaints here. I, I really do love this sweater and I'm gonna knit another one and I'm sure another one after that. But for now, this has got to come off. It smells so good that I uh, I don't really want to move this anywhere. It, it really smells amazing. So I'll have to link what I've got in the description box. All right, I am back again after uh, one more interruption. We kind of had some issues at the, stu at the studio this week. Um, or last week with our plumbing and it's long story short the person just came in to fix it and he was probably wondering what the heck I'm doing <laughs> like sitting in the corner of my studio talking to my cell phone so anyway well I pretty much wrapped up everything I wanted to talk about with my knitting and and what I've been working on but I did want to kind of just talk a little bit about my business since um, it's something that I am just so passionate about, and I know a lot of you, uh, or at least the people who I kind of talk with on, on Instagram, are interested in what I make and what I dye. So uh, I'm just gonna spend a couple minutes talking a, a little bit about what I do and kind of showing off some of my work because I'm pretty proud of it. Um, so yeah, I have this glorious yarn wall here. I'm gonna kind of play around with the camera, and I'm sorry if it's a little wobbly. Um, I am doing this on my cell phone, but I would like to show you guys a little bit of what I am working on. What a smooth transition. So this is my yarn wall, or one of them at least. So when the store opens, this will be one of my displays. Um, right now, it's just how I sort and store my my yarns. Um, yeah, I, I just love it. And again, I'm really proud of it. So just to give you a couple of close-ups, I have a variety of bases and colorways. Um, this label is going away. So... It's not on every skein yet. I'm still working on creating my labels. Um, I designed all of my own logos and everything, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to print them up. Uh, but this is my kind of yarn rainbow. And my husband painted me beautiful murals. I will give a more complete studio tour at some point when we're a little bit more put together. I'm still kind of working on um, getting like the showroom space set up and my sewing studio um, is a little bit messy and uh, it still needs a little bit of work and uh, where I die, the little kitchen, definitely needs a little bit of work. It's kind of dark and you know a little scary in there sometimes. But I hope you like getting just a little snapshot of some of my yarn. And I do pretty much list everything that I have on Etsy. Sometimes I'm a little bit behind, but um, the structure of my shop is, currently at least, I try to just keep my Etsy shop stocked all the time. So I don't really do um, like big weekly updates or bi-monthly updates. I, I just try to have like a running inventory um, and that's working for me so far. But that could change. Um, like I mentioned, I also make project bags. So I did show already one of my larger ones, this Alice in Wonderland bag. And this is sort of the template. You know, I, I use different fabrics all the time. I, I really like to play around with it and do different designs, but this is one of my favorites. So I have created a few styles in this one. Um, so I've got that one. I have a zipper pouch with the same fabric and design. 
Um, and this one features a label. So I love this one. It's the perfect size for um, small knitting projects uh, or notions or what have you. This is a little bit bigger than the sock bag that I was using uh, for my socks earlier in the episode. But it's, yeah, just adorable. This has been my most popular size so far. Um, so I do tend to sell out of these ones, but again, I'm constantly designing these bags and I just love them. And I also have it in this design. So again, similar to the one I, I showed before, but this one is larger. I love these color combinations and um, anything with cranes, I am just so in love with. Um, so I do love this bag. And these ones really are a great size. Uh, not too big. You can fit them inside of other bags easily or, you know, I mean, that, that to show you how huge this bag is. It just swallows it up. Um, and I will show you one more large one. I love this one because it's so vibrant and just beautiful. And these ones are great, not just for knitting. This would be a great travel bag or a diaper bag, um, really anything, because it is very large. But this one has these adorable little, like woodland creatures on it. And they're all gathering honey. So again, just very cute. All right, so I guess I've pretty much um, talked everything over and over. So we're probably done here. <laughs> I don't really know how to end this thing, but I will say, um, like I mentioned, you can find me on Instagram as Paper Crane Yarns. I love to chat with people on there. Um, here and there, you know, people reach out to me or I talk to you guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I love to see what you all are knitting. So I would love it if you would um, find me over there. And um, you can find me on Ravelry. I'm not super social on there, but again, I, I'm on there almost every day. I just, I love looking through um, the pattern libraries and everybody's projects. So you can find me on there. You can find me on Etsy as Paper Crane Yarns. And of course here now. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been great talking to you guys.